we have another Spencer turbine living here. This one from Weisheimer's Vacuum in Columbus, Ohio. I had seen it in pictures, and uh, I, I should have known it would have come to live here with me eventually. Home for wayward built-in vacuum cleaners. This machine is from about 1920, I believe. You can see it's very similar to this one over here, which is from 1914, but it's later. The earlier machines used a flip-up clean-out door. The ones before that used a removable dirt can that was on kind of a sidearm separator design. On this one, like the later Spencers and the bigger Spencers, you have two spring-loaded catches and one very large plate. This is probably 16 inches in diameter that comes off, exposing... And I don't think the bigger ones had this. This was a residential feature, just to make it easier to empty. This slid out, and you could dump it out. And there is a screen up inside the machine, um, about here in the thing. Just like a vacuum made, you got to hold it with your knee while you secure the latches. Of course, with a vacuum aid, even with two hands, you have to use your knee. Let's look at the nameplates. Spencer Turbine Cleaner, last patent date of 1918. These blanks are not stamped with anything. Oil wells one, two, and three must be kept filled with good quality light dynamo oil. Never oil while running. And this, this uh, diagram shows a larger uh, turbine machine with what looks like about 10 uh, impeller stages. And that would have been like a 3 or a 5 horsepower unit. I believe this originally came with a 1.5 horsepower motor, like this one. But uh, this is another cool thing about this unit. It has been replaced with a more modern motor. Modern, this thing's probably from the 60s, but uh, who knows what happened to the original motor? Usually they're pretty bulletproof, but in any case, somebody made an adapter plate and procured a long shaft, uh, face-mounted, general electric motor. I don't know, should I turn that camera? I don't know, you can probably read it. But this says it's two horsepower, 115 or 230 volt single phase. Come on, focus. Focus, you fuck. 21.6 amps at 115 volts, 10.8 amps at 230 volts. Um, this will be capacitor start. There's two big old capacitors in here. And of course, the centrifugal switch inside the motor. Two and a half inch pipe on the inlet and the exhaust. Uh, this one had two inch on the inlet and two and a half only on the exhaust. Uh, so that's a big old pipe and um, I've just got this inlet sitting in here to block it off. This one has a tag that the earlier machines did not have showing you not only how to maintain the machine but also how to actually use it. First, bearings must be lubricated as instructed. Second, keep dirt receiver emptied and metal screen brushed off. Third, for carpets, upholstery, etc., use plain slot tools. For bare floors, use tools with composition sides. I think they mean felt, because the floor tool was just felt, bladed. For walls, woodwork, furniture, etc., use brush tools. For tufted or button upholstery, use rubber end of hose. Fourth, on all tool, oil all tool joints occasionally. Fifth, don't kink hose in use and always hang it up smoothly when through. I'd like to attach this plaque to some modern uh, systems that I've seen. Sixth, clean motor commutator with dry cloth and a little naphtha if necessary. Never use emery cloth. I believe this would have originally had a repulsion start induction run motor like this or like that and let's turn it on and hear it run
And there's that centrifugal switch. The wind down is not nearly as long as the machines with the original motors. I think that's just because even though the turbines are still a big, huge, heavy thing that's spinning around, the motor itself, the armature of the motor, is going to be much lighter. And that brings up another interesting point. Just for the heck of it, I bought a cheap ammeter off eBay. It's Chinese. It was single-digit dollars, so it's probably not very accurate. But it's interesting to see the starting and running amps. This machine and this machine, the new one, are doing roughly the same amount of work. You're spinning up six big turbines and you're moving however much air through the system at uh, a similar amount of water lift. The, these machines both run at about 45 inches of water lift. But watch the amps. This is the newer motor. More than 50 amps starting and let's call it 15 amps running which is a little higher than the nameplate spec, but that could just be the inaccuracy of the gauge or low voltage or something. So keep that in mind. Over 50 starting amps, which is tremendous. And the older technology used brushes to get the thing spinning up and then the brushes popped out. I've covered that in a different video. Watch the starting amps and the running amps. way lower, much easier on the motor and the electrical circuit. You saw that the starting amps jumped up when the centrifugal switch popped out, and running amps, uh, if this thing is to be believed, it are, it's about five amps running. And of course it's more when you open the inlet. Let's see if I can do that. So your, um, what would you call that, static load, windage, is very low. You saw that the other machine running sealed was, well, triple, triple the current draw. And that's amazing that there's such a difference between newer motors that use a capacitor to kick them in the ass and get them going, and these older motors. It really makes me admire the design of these old ones. And there goes the centrifugal switch. It's, it's ready for another. Same thing with this one, the 1913 Spencer. Uh, much lower starting and running current for the same amount of performance. Let's do the new one again. The new one, which is going to be 100 years old soon. Very quiet, but boy, it's pulling the juice. Look at that. And here's the badge. I don't think I showed that similar to the badge on this one, but between 1914 and 1920-ish, they changed the name of the company. The Spencer Turbine Cleaner Company was originally its own division, and then the Organ Power Company made the blowers for the organs. But between then and when this was made, they merged into the Spencer Turbine Company, still had to be licensed under the Kenny patent, vacuum cleaning equipments manufactured under the Spencer patents, Lot number 1841, number 5785. And this machine, about six years older, is lot number... Boy, that's hard to read. 636, number 1919. So I guess in six years, if the serial numbers are consecutive, they made 4,000 of these. And I don't know if that's 4,000 of this size. You know, the lot numbers are different. I have to believe that's 4,000 vacuum cleaners in general. About 1,000 a year, which is a pretty good number, given the fact that uh, at this time, Spencer work was 
mostly in big public buildings, not nearly as many going into residences because they were the the most expensive system you could buy, but they were also the the best one you could buy. And um, that's really why I make room for these old things. I don't really use them for anything. I just so admire the quality and the performance and the fact that the company is still around today and still making very similar equipment. Thanks for watching.